You know, I normally don't do the first impression or like unboxing type videos, but I feel like I really got to get started talking about this uh, Springfield Echelon now while I wait for parts to show up. Because believe me, it needs work. By now, I'm sure you've all seen just random internet personalities making content with this Springfield Echelon. A lot of them, their guns all look the same. Um, Springfield sent out these ridiculous influencer bundles uh, that included uh, uh, like an X300 light. Uh, let's see, what else was in there? They had an RMR mounted to them and... Oh, and the, the Safari Land holster as well. To me, it seemed more like buying a positive review than asking for an honest one. That's why I said screw it, jumped through a ton of hoops to be able to get an echelon here in the communist state of Washington. Someone has to give this gun an honest once over, and that someone might as well be me. The box for the echelon, seriously, it's really no frills. Uh, it's just like the one uh, for the Hellcat and Hellcat Pro, except for larger. Inside that box, it comes with this soft case. This is the same case that the uh, Hellcat Pro came in. It's just a little bit bigger. Also inside of the box are different size back straps. Uh, you have a couple bags of pins and a speed loader. Um, I like that Springfield is putting speed loaders into uh, their packaging. I personally found the mags for the Hellcat Pro to be a little tough um, when loading. You know, maybe that's my carpal tunnel. I don't know what it is, but I just have a hell of a time with them. So it's nice that they put one in with the Echelon. There's no real paperwork inside of the box aside from this, which has a QR code in it, which is going to let you access um, the manual as well as set up for your warranty. Cool. Like, I have time for all that. Keep in mind, this gun retails at like $650 or whatever. It's, it's under $700. They had to save money somewhere, and apparently they saved a little bit of money by not sending manuals that nobody's really going to read. Although, with this new optic mounting system, it really would have been nice had they included a hard copy of the manual, but we'll go over the optic mounting system later. At first glance, the Springfield Echelon, it's really not very impressive. It doesn't stand out. It doesn't wow me. Visually, you could say that it's almost, you know, just another polymer-framed striker-fired pistol trying to be better than a Glock while snagging some of the market share for full-size pistols. This is a four and a half inch barrel. Um, there also is a threaded barrel version, which is just going to be slightly longer than that. This trigger, the plastic that it's made of, it looks and feels super cheap. Some of the design of this gun looks like there were too many people working on it and none of them were in the same room while it was being designed, if that makes sense. The adaptive grip, as they call it, it's okay. Honestly, it's really nothing special at all. It's nowhere near as aggressive as I would like. And I know there are a lot of people that really like the grip texture on the Hellcat and Hellcat Pro. And this is basically that exact same grip. The problem is though is it does not take very long for that adaptive grip to wear in or break into the point that it's a lot more smooth than what it is straight out of the box. All grip texture and stippling works that way. The M&P of course it's like rough sandpaper when you first buy it. For the first few months if you conceal carry it it is going to eat you alive. Seriously take a DNA sample off that thing. After enough time of shooting the M&P and carrying it, that super aggressive texture mellows out a little bit. It just wears in. It becomes more manageable and it removes less of your skin when you carry it. This right here out of the box, yeah, it's it's got a little grip to it. It feels like it's trying real hard to be some kind of shark skin, but I don't feel like it's going to take very many range trips before this loses what it is and just smooths out to a point where I've got to get something else. I either have to send that in to be re-stippled or I've got to put talon grips on it. 
But you know, I do like that they put this texture on multiple other points on this gun, like the front and bottom side of the trigger guard, as well as the takedown lever. Hell, that takedown lever, it's kind of angled. It functions as a ledge and it has that texture on it. So, you know, it's a little bit grippy. I feel like that was pretty well thought out, but you know, it could be more of an aggressive texture. They also put a similar uh, texture on this Ambi mag release. Um, Whose idea was that anyways? I mean, really, when I'm handling this gun, it feels like the mag release is some weird piece of something stuck in between my trigger finger and my middle finger. It's not comfortable at all. And I 100% am sure that I am going to have issues with dropping my mags accidentally while I'm on the range. I dare you to go search right now for videos of people doing just that. Well, wait till my video's over, of course. How many people have experienced that issue because of this all-time ambi mag release? It's a lot. I get the idea of wanting to make this gun easy to use for both left and right-handed users without any modifications being done. Except the idea sucks because now you have a very vital control wedged firmly between two fingers one of which is gripping the gun, the other is actuating the trigger. There's a lot going on there. It's just a disappointing thing to see that nobody stood up in those design meetings and said, hey, I, th I think there might be a problem with this. At this point, you're probably thinking or even typing, why the hell did this guy even buy this gun if all he's going to do is complain about it? Well, I might explain, this is 360 Tactical Solutions, and you are not going to get this level of honesty in any other channel out there. Part of that is because some of those channels got sent out a bundle that retails at like $1,500. So there's kind of a unspoken debt when it comes to those reviews. Really though, from my honest perspective, I think that the Springfield Echelon has a lot of potential. The aftermarket is really going to come together at a certain point and make this gun something special. Apex, they already have a fix for this dumpster fire of a mag release. They also have a stainless steel guide rod uh, that's going to go ahead and replace that cheap plastic one that comes with it. Use 360TS if you want to save a few bucks at Apex. Hopefully we'll see Apex come out with a trigger kit for this gun in the near future as well. Who knows, we might even see Floyd's Custom step up and do you know, mag extensions, mag wells, porting, all the good stuff. I'm sure there are companies right now working on replacement frames because as a lot of you know, this is a modular chassis system. That's right, slide that serialized fire control unit out and you can put it into a different frame and you're back in business. Springfield is producing three different size frames uh, right now for this gun, small, medium, and large, and I believe the one that comes standard with these is the medium size. I had considered ordering one of the large and smalls just to kind of check them out and see what they were all about, but really I think I'm gonna wait until the aftermarket steps in and comes up with something better, something more worth our time. I mean, look at what Icarus Precision has done for SIGs. Their frames are amazing. Hell, there's a dozen different companies making uh, grip modules for SIGs at this point, and I really feel like it won't be long until we start seeing that same thing for the Springfield. One of the big things about the Springfield, though, is that it's more reasonably priced than a SIG. I'm not going to debate about, you know, quality or durability between the two um, firearms. It's not the conversation today. I'm just saying that because it is a cheaper gun, a lot of people are going to gravitate towards this, so we should see more aftermarket support rather quickly. Now, one of the things that really made me decide that I had to have the Echelon was the slide. First off, these serrations are fairly deep and they have a really good grip to them. Manipulating the slide on this gun is really easy. There's no slipping involved no matter what direction you go from, no matter how you manipulate the slide, it's going to work well for you in all conditions. Then of course, this model also comes with the U-notch sights. I love these things. There's another one that comes with uh, night sights. Not a big fan of night sights, but I really enjoy the U-notch. People shit all over these things online, but 
you know, I prefer red dot. Second to that would be fiber optic. If I'm not using fiber optic and I absolutely have to use iron sights, um, the U-notch for me is really easy to see, really easy to pick up. What really sold me on this gun and what I think is really going to blow up the popularity of it is the optics mounting platform. That's what I'm here for. That's why I bought the gun. Now I don't necessarily mind using an adapter plate. And if I'm going to use an adapter plate, I'm going to use a high quality plate from CNH Precision. You guys know that. I've talked about that in a dozen other videos. Obviously, whenever possible, doing a direct mount is always going to be the best way to mount an optic. It's going to be the most secure. And that's why this gun is so cool because it comes with these pin sets and once you remove this cover plate, uh, there's a bunch of holes in there and you can swap out different pins depending on which type of optic you want to use. I think I read somewhere that you can use like over 20 or 30 different optics uh, with the gun. Um, everything's basically covered. Here I have pin set number three, which is shield. Pin set number two, Delta Point Pro. Right out of the box, it is set up with the pins to be able to install uh, something with the RMR footprint on it. I'll, I have an extra Hollow Sun 507C somewhere in here, so that's what's going to go on this gun. For those of you that are wondering or want to ask the question uh, about how does it co witness, you guys know I really don't care about co witnessing, I, I have no interest in it whatsoever. A lot of you guys do, and that's fine. If you're concerned about co-witnessing, I have taken the plate off of this and um, mocked up my red dot onto it. And whether I have an RMR on here or the 507C, I can see just fine uh, through the glass to the iron sights. Because there's no plate and you know because you have the different pins to mount it, it sits really low, really deep into the slide, which is great. Not just for co-witnessing, but it gets you closer to the bore than you would with most other handguns. Here's the question though, is it going to last? Are these pins going to shear off during heavy use? That's the question. You know, when I mocked up my red dot on here, there is just a little bit of a gap in the front and the back of the optic, and that's not exactly something that you want to see um, when you have an optic mounted well. You want that thing just snugged in there nice and tight. Gravity is a real son of a bitch. I mean, ask a retired stripper, she'll tell you. We're gonna find out how these pins work though. I'll tell you that much. I've got a couple thousand rounds in the mail right now. Hopefully they should be here in a couple of days. And we're gonna get started really hammering down on this echelon. I know a lot of people have their issues with Springfield, politically speaking. And that's a whole different conversation. The thing is though about this echelon is just like my Hellcat Pro, they're both made by HS product over in Croatia. What I'm interested in here is the quality of the echelon. I'm interested in how it's going to handle the high round count that I've put through like my Hellcat Pro in the last couple of years. After seeing my Hellcat Pro hold up the way that it has, I'm actually really confident that this echelon is going to do well. Um, I'm pretty sure that optics mounting system is going to be able to handle the extended use that I'm about to put through it. If it doesn't, well, you guys will find out as we go ahead and run this gun. I'm not going to do some ridiculous torture test where, you know, I soak it in water and I chuck it down in the dirt and throw some sand in it and skip it down a gravel road and then fire two shots through it and tell you how incredible it is. While those videos are entertaining, they really serve no purpose. They aren't going to tell you how a gun is going to run over time during normal use. That's my job. That's what I'm here to do. I'm going to put several thousand rounds through this gun as I upgrade it with pretty much every aftermarket part that the market comes up with. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure that you hit that button down below. That's going to be it today. And remember, get out there and get some range time in. I'll see you back here real soon.